Hey there, it's Walt. Do you wake up every day excited about the work you get to do? I'm recording this blog video on a Sunday. And I don't usually record my blogs on a Sunday, but I'm recording it today because I had this, just this wonderful sense of excitement about the week ahead. And even though it's in a really busy week, it's, it's filled with appointments and conferences and calls and some exciting travel. I just am so looking forward to this week ahead. I have the privilege of working with the most amazing clients. I often get to Fridays and I'm sad that the week is over. That always wasn't the case. You know, for years as I was a practitioner toiling in my law practice, you know, even though I was a good lawyer, even though I enjoyed serving my clients in that area, I found that the adversarial process just so wore me down. And I would get to Sundays and to Sunday evenings with this sense of dread about the week starting. And this, would, this was a part of the fabric of my life. You know, I'd get to Sunday night and, and it just was this sense of, oh God, I've got to do it again. And I remember this one day I walked into a courthouse that I frequented and went through the metal detector and saw a buddy of mine, the state marshal on the other side. And I smiled at him and I said, hey, Dan, how are you? And he shook his head and he looked at me and he said, well, one day closer to the weekend. And it was Monday. And I realized in that moment that for me, something needed to shift that, you know, that was not a way to live from weekend to weekend to weekend. And of course, you know, Dan's experience, my experience, that they weren't, they're not rare experiences. There's this huge amount of dissatisfaction in work in general. 70% of workers don't feel engaged in the work they do, meaning that they have no sense of meaning or purpose or connection to the overall arc, the direction of the organization, that they don't feel value, that they don't feel the work is important. And it's actually, it's actually higher among professionals, among my colleagues in the law, it's, it's actually close to 90% that disconnect, which is sad because I, the law is one of the great professions on the planet as, and, and the work is so, so important. And what's true is that the sands of our lives run so quickly through the glass. I think that we have an obligation to seek out that work that gives us vision and mission and purpose and connection to something. There was a very interesting study done recently, a deep study by Gallup, one of the deepest studies they've done in recent years around work and around engagement. And it confirmed this number of 70%, that 70% are disengaged. And of course, it also uh, confirmed the the hypothesis, the, uh, the research that suggests that when you lift up engagement, when you increase an organization's engagement, you increase it point by point, um, dropping to the bottom line. So if you increase the engagement of a team by 5%, you actually can increase your bottom line by 5%. It's huge, it's a one-to-one -one correlation. But the deeper piece of this research was fascinating that Years ago, the, the priorities that people had were, you know, what they wanted most of all were family and a, a nice house, a nice home, nice things, and then a job. And the research flipped that on its head. Now the research showed that the most important thing was for people to have a good job and good being defined as being connected with a mission, with purpose, having that sense of meaning associated with the work. And the article was interesting too because it had a clarion call uh, to management that it is the managers, it is the leadership responsibility to 
take the communication, take that vision and mission of the organization and communicate it with its people. And that in and of itself, getting good mid-level and upper-level managers to, can, to communicate that in and of itself can r raise the energy vibration of the organization. But I think the, that sense of vision, mission, purpose in the work that we do is so critically important. You know, if you hearken back to, uh, to Maslow's pyramid, uh, the hierarchy of needs, uh, after all of our baser needs are met in life, at the top of the pyramid is that sense of wanting mission and purpose. You know, there's, a, I think, probably a reason that Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life is sold 40 million copies in 30 different languages. It's part of our DNA to want that, to seek for that, to, to grab hold of meaning and purpose. And I think that we have the opportunity to co-create these things that are our lives. I think we have the opportunity, perhaps even the responsibility, to seek out those ways to be able to take those gifts and talents that are uniquely ours to share and go out and find those people that we're meant to serve and to serve them with all our heart and to get that deep sense of satisfaction and joy from doing it. The late, great Steve Jobs once said, for the last 33 years, I've looked in the mirror each day and asked myself this question. If today were the last day of my life, would I want to be doing what I'm doing today? And if the answer were no for too many days in a row, I knew I needed to do something different. I think we all have that call to look in the mirror each day and ask that question as the sands of our lives tick through. Are we answering that call to show up with these gifts and talents that we have and to step out and to really make an impact in the world. So I wish you a good week, a great rest of the day, a great rest of the week. Hold that question. Am I doing work I love? Talk soon.